This video is going to cover a brand new feature in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015, and that's the use of artboards. So I'm going to dive in pretty quick here and show you how to actually create artboards in Photoshop CC 2015. And then I'll show you how these are actually super useful for saving you a lot of time if you're a website or app front end designer. So to use artboards, there's a few different ways to do it. The easiest one perhaps is to go to file and then new. And from this menu right here under document type where it says custom right now, you can actually select artboard. It's near the bottom here. If you don't see this option, make sure that your Photoshop is updated to CC 2015. This isn't on CC 2014 or any other older version. So once I select artboard, it brings up this new menu and it actually has some really cool features inside this menu. And under artboard size right here, you can see by default, it says iPhone 6 plus, and then it gives the dimensions of that screen. If you click this, you'll be presented with all sorts of different options for you to pick from for different artboard sizes for different Apple devices, stuff like a Microsoft Surface Pro, as well as different web options and very common web sizes for displaying websites. So this is really focused for people who either do front end design on websites or app development. And it even has stuff like Mac icons, iOS 7 icons. And up at the top here, we have Apple Watch in the 38 and 42 millimeters. So you can decide what size of project you want to work on and select it from this list, or you can enter in a custom width and height as well if you want to do that. I'm just going to use the iPhone 6 Plus here and hit OK. So now we have our window open here. And as you can tell right here, there is an artboard, which kind of looks like a folder in my layers menu. If I turn it on and off, it turns on or off this artboard. If you want to change the background color, behind this artboard. I'm just going to click on the bottom side of my layers here so this artboard isn't selected and then right click on the background and then it'll bring up a different color options that you can use to have behind your artboard. I don't like light backgrounds like this. That's just a personal preference. So I'm going to set it to dark gray but you can set it to be whatever it is you want it to be. It's pretty easy to go in there and do that. And a second way you can add in an artboard, even if you have existing artwork in here before you made the artboard, is to go to layer and then new and then artboard. It's kind of near the middle here. And then you can name your artboard, whatever it is you want it to be. So I'll just call this new, whoops, caps lock was on. I'll call this new artboard if I can type here. And then you can either enter in a custom width and height or select from this menu. So I'll do something like a iOS 7 iPad app icon. And then I'll hit OK. And then it creates this new artboard right here. So I'm going to click off of that on my layers so that isn't selected. And you can select either this new artboard or your original artboard and then move it around on your screen wherever you want. And something else you can do that's actually super useful, I'm gonna click on my layers window here on the bottom so that one of these artboards isn't selected. And then make sure my black arrow tool is selected. It's right here on the toolbar in the upper left. V is the keyboard shortcut for that. And if you don't have any of these artboards selected and you wanna duplicate an artboard to be the same as the other, you can hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then click on the portion that says Artboard 1 or whatever you happen to name your artboard and then click and drag this off to the side. If you want to make sure it stays on the perfect same horizontal or vertical, just hold Shift when you're doing that and it will do that for you. And then when you're done with that, you can just let go and it will go ahead and duplicate this artboard off to the side here. And why that's really useful is if you want to develop a website or an app and you have the basic design done and you just want to duplicate that to make different changes for different states in the app or website, this can be extremely helpful. So that right there is the basics of artboards. And I'm going to show you what makes artboards particularly cool. So I'm actually going to make a new document very quickly here that isn't an artboard because it doesn't need to be. I'm just going to do custom right here. And then I'm going to enter in something small like 250 pixels by 200 pixels. And I'm just going to very quickly make a button here. And the reason why I'm making a button here is to kind of display a cool feature that the artboards take a lot of advantage of, and that is the built-in libraries in Adobe Photoshop CC. So I went ahead and made this button, and I'm gonna stick all this stuff in a folder just so it's nicely grouped up here, and then I'm gonna double click on the folder name and name it button. I'm not spending a lot of time on how to create this because this isn't something that I think you would actually want to use here. It's just a pretty quick design to show off this feature. So the cool thing here is using libraries, which is Adobe's new way to store a bunch of different stuff for you in the cloud. And to get that, you want to go to Window and then Libraries, sort of near the middle here. It's just below Layers. And once you've created an asset that you want to use over and over again, it can be stuff like brushes, different things that you've built using layers, or even stuff like type or type styles. You can just click and drag on this object and drag it into the library that you have selected right here. So it's going to quickly sync this up to the cloud. And when it's done, it's under Graphics, and then it's called Button, since that's what my folder is called. 
And to make a new library, you can click on this little menu right here, and then you can go to create new library, which will let you name your library whatever you want. And you can even share this library if you use this drop down in the upper right here, and then go to collaborate if you want other people to be able to modify and use these different library items, or if you just have a bunch of stuff like logos and stuff and you want to share it that way, you can use the share link option, which will give people the option to download stuff within your libraries. So now right here in this library that I call tutorial, there's this button that I created. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm just going to kind of start new by deleting all these artboards. Well, actually I can delete the top two artboards. I'll leave the original one the same here. And I'm going to go to this library and then just click and drag this new button right here into my library. This will give me a little warning here. That's totally fine. I'm just going to hit OK. So it saves this in here. So now we have this not so great looking button here, but it's just to show what this thing is potentially able to do. And I also want to make sure that I hit this check mark at the top right here. So it says commit transform. And once I do that, as you can see here, this new button is inside my artboard one. Artboards act kind of like a folder, but you can have folders inside artboards too. That's totally cool. But in general, you can kind of think of each artboard as its own folder. But if I click on this button and start dragging it outside of the artboard, you can tell that the artboard does automatically clip until you get too far out, in which case it brings this button outside of the artboard altogether and just into the Photoshop document itself. So I'm going to drag this back into this new window right here, this artboard. And what I'm going to do is click off the artboard and then using my selection tool, which is the arrow and it's V as a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to click on the word artboard. I'm going to hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac, click on the artboard type, start dragging this off to the side while holding shift and then let go. So what this did is duplicated this artboard exactly. So now I have artboard and artboard copy. If I want to change this name, I can just double click on the type here in the layers and then rename this option two. And I can do the same thing by double clicking on artboard one to rename that to option one. So this button here is actually the same button across both of these different objects. And since I duplicated it, it's in the same place. So if you're a website designer or an app designer, for example, and you wanna have some pre-made assets that'll be consistent across everything, artboards and the libraries are a super awesome way to do that. So let's say I really don't like the colors I chose for this button and I want the center to be white instead of this blue color. I can just double click on my graphics library right here where I have this button saved, which will bring this up into a new window. And inside this new window is just like I created it. So there's a folder called button and inside that folder, there's the blue button on top and then the orange button beneath it. So if I want to change the color of this, I can just hit control U on a PC or I could do this a lot of different ways actually, but I'm gonna hit control U to bring up hue saturation. And then I'm gonna bring the lightness all the way up until this thing is totally white. So right there is what I wanted to do. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And then this new window, I'm gonna save this. And if you look at my libraries window right here, you can tell the button is now updated with the white center fill here instead of the old blue one. So I can go ahead and close this new window. And as you can tell, it automatically updated this on both of my artboards. So if you're trying to do stuff like color testing, or if you wanna be able to continually develop and design stuff within your different artboards using the libraries, this will make all the changes cascade across all the different lightboards you've ever applied this to, or any document you've applied this to. Libraries are super powerful in that aspect because it always lets you update your things over time and then it will update it across every single document that you've ever placed that particular library item inside. So if you don't like making the same change over and over and over again, libraries will come in particularly handy for you to go ahead and do that. It's a really cool way to work in my opinion and it gives you a lot of flexibility when you want to actually go in there, make one simple change and just have to do it once and have all the work done for you. So let's say I wanted to show a client five different website options, but the only changes are the colors of the actual website and not the actual styling of the buttons, et cetera, et cetera. Using a library and artboards would be a super fast way to do this. And if you want to export your libraries, there's a way to do that within Photoshop that's very easy to do. You just go to File, and then you go to Export, and then you want to do Export As. And it's going to bring up a new window here with our two different options. So this is Option 1, and here's Option 2. So since these are the same, they look the same, but to export both of these, you can just go to file settings and select however you want to go ahead and export this out. So it's set to PNG, but for example, I could have the top one be a PNG and the bottom one be a JPEG if I want to do that, and we'll export it separately like that. You could also make changes like image size right here. So if I make this 200 pixels, the height will automatically adjust to be consistent with the 
width that I entered in here, so all the aspect ratios maintain the same. But the option two up here will be the same as it was before since I didn't modify the overall size of that one. And once you're done, you can just hit export, and then we'll go ahead and export these as two different files. So that's it for artboards in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. I think this is going to be extraordinarily useful for front end designers who do stuff like websites, apps, icons, any of that stuff, anything that's really web focused or technology focused. These are really going to be a huge time saver for you in the future especially when you use it in combination with the libraries, which I went over very quickly here, but go ahead and play around with libraries. You can do stuff like colors, like I can just enter in a color right here, and that way people will always have access to a specific chosen color library that you give them. And if you click on this particular color, it'll go ahead and make your fill color, whatever color you selected. So if you have like four brand colors, you could enter in all these different colors by just starting to select them over here and then hitting this little button right here that says add foreground color. And it goes ahead and shows the hex codes as well as the colors here under the colors menu inside the library that you've created. But that's it for this tutorial. I do hope you found it helpful. I think artboards are probably going to be super useful to a lot of different people. And as always, if you found this helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to release videos just like this every week. Thank you for watching.